Chapter 4.9.15 There's no excuse for failing to understand the importance of physical power projection. Your problem is not the problem. Your problem is your attitude about the problem. Captain Jack Sparrow, reference 113. Delightful. Many have claimed that physical power breeds oppression, but this section provides a counter-argument that oppression is actually caused by the asymmetric application of physical power rather than physical power in and of itself. It's not simply the fact that one side uses physical power on the other that's to blame for oppression. It's that one side is asymmetrically more capable of and willing to use physical power on the other side that's to blame for the oppression. In other words, oppression occurs when one side uses physical power and the other one doesn't. This would imply that it's actually the lack of capability or willingness to utilize physical power that breeds oppression. To put it bluntly, oppression is what happens when people refuse to fight for what they value. Herein lies a counter-argument about why it's not logical for the oppressed to blame their state of oppression on the physical strength and aggression of their oppressor. It's not reasonable for people to villainize the use of physical power to capture and secure resources because this is simply how nature works. Look around and you will see that the strongest, sharpest, and most physically assertive creatures rise to the top of every food chain in practically every biome on earth. For people to ignore their primordial roots and these basic lessons of nature and survivorship is not logical. It's ideological. The author asserts that this is what happens when people spend too much time separated from predators. They forget how survival works. The act of using physical power to settle disputes, establish pecking order, and secure resources preceded agrarian civilization by billions of years. Life has always behaved like this, since it was nothing but a thin film of organic material stretched across a volcanic rock. And there's simply no logical reason to believe that sapiens would be an exception to this behavior. The reasoning that people use to claim that the use of physical power is bad is ideological, not logical. But ideologies alone can't secure irrigated land or protect society from neighboring societies who want to take that irrigated land back. Only physical power does that. If we were to factor basic lessons of nature and survivorship into our calculus, then one counter-argument to people who claim that physical power and aggression is the root cause of oppression is that the oppressed should take accountability for their lack of physical power and aggression. It's irrational to expect sapiens to be exempt from the basic principles of survivorship that we can all independently observe and verify. Life has always been about survival of the fittest, about finding the best ways to project power and adapt. Our imaginations and our ideals don't change the laws of physics. As argued throughout this thesis, survival of the fittest didn't suddenly disappear when sapiens started using abstract thinking to form moral, ethical, or theological concepts. Sapiens are not exempt from life's rigorous natural selection process. We do not get to unsubscribe from primordial economics and the survivor's dilemma just because we happen to be capable of believing in imaginary alternative realities where physical power isn't the primary basis for settling our intraspecies disputes and establishing our dominance hierarchies. For the past 4 billion years, the universe has been consistently harsh and unsympathetic to organisms which don't find ways to project power in increasingly clever ways. If any organism is to survive and prosper in this environment, they must stay accountable to themselves and not allow themselves to stop projecting power. Sapiens are organisms. Like any other organism, they are responsible for developing increasingly clever ways to project power for the sake of survival and prosperity in a world teeming with predators and entropy. Since sapiens are peak predators, they especially must keep searching for increasingly clever power projection tactics, techniques, and technologies which maximize their ability to survive against themselves. 
to survive against ourselves. These are stoic lessons which many military officers, like the author, have learned to accept. The blunt logical reasoning goes something like this. Your opponent's strength may not be the only thing to blame for your losses. Your own physical weakness, incompetence, or complacency could just as easily be blamed for your losses. Your opponent's inclination to be physically aggressive may not be exclusively to blame for your losses. Your disinclination to be physically aggressive at appropriate times and places could just as easily be blamed for your losses. Your fear and aversion to using physical power could just as easily be to blame for your losses. Your trust in untrustworthy people or your reliance on imaginary power which doesn't physically defend you could just as easily be to blame for your losses. So, if you don't want to experience losses or become oppressed, it stands to reason that you should consider taking responsibility for your own weakness, ignorance, and incompetence rather than excitement Assigning the blame to other people. If you don't fight for what you value, then you will be devoured like everything else is in nature. If you allow yourself to become physically weak, docile, and domesticated, then it stands to reason that you should expect to suffer the same fate as dozens of other animals which became physically weak, docile, and domesticated. If you fail to adapt to shared objective physical reality, then it is unreasonable for you to expect or even more ridiculous for you to believe that you deserve a different outcome than countless other species who failed to adapt to physical reality over the past hundreds of millions of years. We can all independently observe how the world functions outside of that imaginary one we keep building inside of their heads. The use or misuse of certain pronouns can really make one think. Proof of power is all around us. We can see and measure it everywhere. There is no shortage of evidence outside our homes, inside our history books, or on top of our dinner plates. There is simply no excuse for not recognizing the essential role that physical power plays for one's own security and prosperity. No matter how energy intensive it is, and no matter how much physical injury it risks, Incontrovertible proof of how essential physical power projection is for survival is present in practically every observable corner of our environment, at every size and scale. It doesn't make sense to expect nature to function differently for sapiens than for everything else. In shared objective physical reality, every decision, including and especially the decision not to project physical power, has material consequence and nobody gets to unsubscribe from them and nobody gets to unsubscribe from them